all women in this industry because you really have to be bold and, and brave and put yourself out there. And I think that one of the things that's quite hard when you're growing up is being told to be on camera, you have to be vain, you have to be this, that and the other and, and have qualities that don't seem to be that nice. Um, and actually, no, it's not a bad thing to put yourself or, or want to be put on camera. If that's what you want to do, do it. Um, so yeah, I really admire all people who who do the job that they do and are able to kind of quiet those voices in their heads that tell them they shouldn't be doing it because you know, imposter syndrome is still something that affects you once you are doing the job that you want to do. So anyone who can, is able to get through that has my respect. There are many women who inspire me that I always struggle to pinpoint one. Um, but what I can say is that the women that do inspire me are determined to pursue pathways into male-dominated industries and encourage others to do the same and to say that, you know, this industry is for everyone, you can do this. Um, so yes, uh, those are the ones that I look up to. I'm constantly inspired by so many people in the esports industry. Uh, it's really difficult to talk about just one or two. But those, I suppose, who inspire me the most are the ones who stand up for what they believe in, despite any backlash, and continuously try to make the scene a better place. People like Moxie, Sheepstick, Renessa, and of course, Ruby and Sparks are my biggest sources of inspiration. Some women who inspire me in my life, um, not all of them necessarily in esports, are number one, Dolly Parton. Not only does she make incredible music, she is a really uh, giving, she um, pays for books for children across the world. She is just, I just think, an incredible icon. Uh, my mother, who is just the most wonderful woman, and if my daughter loves me as much as I love my mother, then I am very blessed as well. In my teaching career, it is my friend Seetal, who is the greatest teacher I have ever known. And in esports, it's got to be um, Trisha Sugita, who is the CEO of FlyQuest, who is just such a beautiful soul. One of my biggest inspirations in esports is a kid named Joseph Saley. He's one of the most prolific Classic Tetris players, and on his Classic Tetris World Championship debut, he managed to beat world champion jo Jonas Neubauer, who won seven times out of the past eight years. He made very quick improvement, he showed versatility, he showed drive, and honestly, I want to be like that. I'd like to see the esports industry in five years to be less male dominating and for more females to get involved, breaking the bias and stereotypes, and for it to be less toxic towards women, because there's so many insults and negativity that we get daily. In five years, I want to be able to feel that women and non-binary players have exactly the same opportunities and chances that male players get, but in every eSport. So in five years time, where I'd like to see eSports is basically with integrated professional teams. I think that would be the goal. Uh, I mean, I know normal sport hasn't got there yet, but I think in eSports we're on a more level playing field. Um, gender isn't necessary isn't a boundary to um, being able to play games or intelligence or anything like that i want to see it thriving i want to see it being successful and i want to see it being more open to people from different backgrounds than ever before and i hope that if someone doesn't see themselves in this industry but wants to be part of it i hope that people who are behind the scenes putting strings whether they're in organ organizations or their tournament operators i hope they they find a way to make those people feel welcome um, and if you're not feeling welcome then you should be able to speak up about it but you shouldn't have to speak up about it it shouldn't be on you esports is growing so fast that i see it being a mainstream form of media so that is even more accessible to young people so particularly within education with that being said i see the education and esports scene growing um that it's no longer unique to study esports or undertake an apprenticeship in those kinds of courses as well in one of our most recent games i think two weeks ago we came across this team that were just being really bm like bad manners all the time they weren't playing fair on any level 
and like throughout the whole game the whole team was sort of saying rude things to us not exactly letting us play together it's just taking the fun out of of playing like a competitive game and yeah we all of us managed to get through to the end kept all in high spirits we kept going even though like the game did eventually result in a loss we still managed to keep it all together and work well i think two events i always use as examples that really stick out in my mind are i am sydney because that audience is absolutely crazy and i got to stage host the caches which is a show match but it is the gold standard i'd say for show matches in our industry and I got to go out and talk to that audience <laughs> on their level, on my level. We were on the same level, me and Sydney, and they all know exactly what I mean by that. And I really got to feel like I could be myself, and that's really invaluable, I think. Um, and the same, actually, I got to do that in Rotterdam for a DreamHack Open event. It might not be on the scale of Katowice, but everyone who worked that event was just a diamond, and everyone in the audience, even when we're having technical failures and had to like fill on the broadcast and then had to go to a break. Everyone who was in that building with us just helped it stay alive and, and there was so much positive energy and myself and the other talent went out to kind of meet the audience and stuff while we were having those technical difficulties. And we just had so much fun. And I can't wait to have those experiences again. I don't care how big they are, as long as I get to have them. It's just that energy you have from being there because you're all love the same game and you all want to see the best version of that game played and that's the magic of the land right my career within esports has been amazing um and the journey has been um really sort of a bit of an eye-opener um so from establishing the provision at the college um seeing my students feel really proud of themselves and each other um but i think a personal favorite is winning the Game Hers Award um, as top educator last year. Um, it meant so much to me as a South Asian woman. I felt that it was proof that I could be someone and that I was able to prove a lot of people wrong. Um, so that was quite a, a proud moment for myself and it meant a lot. My favorite part of my career so far has definitely been running tournaments. Giving female and non-binary players a chance to showcase their skills has been a super important part of my work at Dota Valkyries, as I feel this will hopefully inspire more players to come in and play the game. Well, it's got to be, I talked about her earlier, her name's Trisha Sugita. She's the CEO of FlyQuest. She's a former uh, player and she just has the kindest soul, I think, of anybody I've met um, in esports. She really cares about well-being. She cares about her team. She cares about the other teams. She's competitive, yet she shows um, that she values her opponents uh, or the, the team's opponents as well. One of the women in esports I most love to meet is Gagory. Gagory is, well, was the tank player for Shanghai Dragons back in the Overwatch League season one. She was an inspiration to a lot of girl gamers who really had no representation in the league or really any media as a whole. I've had the chance already to work with so many incredible women, but if I had to choose just one, it would be Nicole LaPointe Jameson, because she's a total badass. I would love to work with Lucy Luce, who is a Counter-Strike player, who I've been playing CS with for oh, ages, actually. Um, I've met her through Twitch streaming. She streams on Twitch and she started making video content as well. She started commentating the CS Cash Cups and um, I'm really, really hoping to see her part of like an ESL Challenger broadcast soon and, and see her rise up the ranks because she can do play by play or colour and she's got a really good broadcasting voice and she's also just really naturally good. Yeah, I, I would love to see her going really far in, in Counter-Strike in particular. So that's Lucy Luce, watch out for her. She's on Twitch, Lucy Luce, so L-U-C-E underscore. Uh, do do try and support her if, if you feel so inclined, because I want to work with her at some point in the future. Lizzie Squires from Vulpine has taught me so much about esports. I'd be mad if I didn't say I'd love to work with her. Um, her knowledge and expertise is valued so highly and she's an amazing friend and mentor she's so encouraging um if it wasn't for her there's so much that i think i probably would never have done 
um, d to the extent that she made me brave enough to host charity live streams um, and pursue this career knowing that potentially there could be some pushback. I think it's important to break the stereotypes about women being involved in esports because it's mostly been seen as such like a masculine thing but it should just be more inclusive because it's not, it's not just men that can play games and that can be good at games. So in esports we want to see the whole breadth of the spectrum of people who play computer games and that's lots of different people and if we can um, if we can challenge those stereotypes and we can promote more women um, in esports then that means that the younger generation will see more people that they aspire to be and so they will want to go and play and then they will want to go and play and so you get more and more and more and it builds up and also the more women that's involved in esports means that we can tackle some of the toxic um, misogyny that you see perhaps on, in some online games and so if we're there if the more women there are sticking up for other women the more normal it becomes for um, people to see that it's important to be inclusive for everybody in gaming. Esports is for everyone. Therefore, it's so important that we are able to challenge the stereotypes and show that women are not doing a man's job, uh, but they are doing a job that they've worked really hard for um, and doing something that they're truly amazing at. Um, and I think going with that sort of mentality is really going to shape the way that we view these stereotypes and hopefully as a, a community or a society we're able to um, you know, encourage and challenge those stereotypes. Breaking down the stereotypes around women in eSport will organically bring more people into the sport. Also it will make it a safer, less scary place to be. The more accepted it is that women play games professionally, the less threats and harassment will take place. I, I just think it's a case of people speaking up. So when you see women who are often the only women on an esports broadcast, although that's totally got so much better in the last year, I've noticed. If if she's being criticised and, and being told she's a token just for her presence and, and, and you are also on that broadcast, then speak up. I would love to see that happen more because it can be, it can be really um, disappointing when you, when you are really proud that you've got a job, and then there's loads of people saying, "Oh, well, they've only got the job because of being a woman." And I think if there's more people rallying around and saying, "Actually, you're wrong," then that really helps you feel more welcome, and it helps you feel like the rest of your colleagues have confidence in you. So I think that's a really easy way to make more women feel uh, like a positive part of the industry, and. Uh, will hopefully help break down some of those stereotypes too. It's just a really simple way to, to help out women on International Women's Day and beyond. I'm in Frankie Ward. I didn't make much sense because I've got a two month old baby and I'm really tired, <laughs> but happy International Women's Day. <laughs> I'm so sorry to whoever has to edit this, sorry.